every once in a while you may encounter images that have noise patterns that are organized in horizontal lines. I don't see this very often, but when I have run into it upon occasion, I didn't always know how to deal with it. But recently I ran into this when I was reprocessing some old data of SH2101, the Tulip Nebula. In this particular case, I didn't really notice this until I went nonlinear, and then I went starless. And when I looked at the starless image, I could see some banding that was going across the image. And this was not something I wanted to deal with because I knew I would be stretching the image and that would make the pattern only worse. This may not be very evident through the video here, so I've taken a copy of the image and I boosted the contrast and I've raised the lightness level a little bit, so hopefully you can see the pattern in here. You see these noise patterns of striations that are going across the image, forming horizontal bands. The effect can be subtle, but as you saw, when you boost the contrast, and we'll be doing that quite a bit with this image, it's just going to get worse. So how do you deal with it? Fortunately, there's a script called Canon Banding Reduction. Apparently, some Canon cameras have had banding problems, and that's why this script was written. But I don't use a Canon camera. I use an ASI 2600mm Pro camera, and this worked just great for me. Basically, you want to select your image, then go and run the script. The script can be found under the Script menu, under Utilities. Canon Banding Reduction is the name. When the script opens, the first thing you're going to want to do is open up the window a little bit larger. This red area here is going to be the preview area. So the very first control we're going to work with is activate preview. We're going to check this particular box. At this point, a small section of the image is shown and you can scroll around to get the part that you really want. And this will give you an idea of what you're working with. And because we're in preview mode, as we make changes, we'll be able to see the effect of those changes. If you happen to be dealing with nonlinear data, you can also click here on the STF box, which will give you the screen transfer function, which will let you see what's going on a little bit better. In this particular case, we're dealing with data that's already been stretched into a nonlinear mode, so we don't need that. The primary control that we're going to be dealing with here is called the amount. And this deals with the amount of the correction. The default value is 1, and at 1, nothing is happening. It's basically a default null position where nothing is going on. If you were to take this control and make it higher, what you end up doing is accentuating the banding that you actually can see. And this is actually not a bad idea if what you're trying to do is accentuate the banding so you can get a better idea of your problem areas. Like if I do that and bring up this control up to the high end, you can really start to see the banding in the preview window a little bit better. Now, if I take this back down to one, then the correction is going to go away and we're back to pretty much our default image that we started with. If we go in the other direction, we're actually going to start minimizing the banding. And if we were to go all the way down to zero, what we're actually getting is sort of an inverse. We've gone too far, we've overcorrected, and now what you'll end up seeing is something that looks like an inverse of the original banding problem that you had. So the trick here is to be able to find the sweet spot. Where do you want to put this control where you're not accentuating the problem in either direction and you're canceling it out? And for this particular image, after I played around with it, I found that the best place seemed to be about 0.75. That's pretty much what you need to do with this tool. It's pretty straightforward. Now there is another control in here. And this control is protecting the highlights from correction. And when you check this box, then this slider will tell you where to put a threshold to determine what's being called highlights. When you click on this, the default value is one, and this is really a one times a standard deviation of the image. So the highest stand, one standard deviation of the image is called highlight and it's protected. And as you change this multiplier, you can include more or less in that highlight detail. Now, I don't know exactly why this control is in there. I've never had to deal with it. Most of the time I'm dealing with noise and noise tends to be lower value pixels, not higher value. And I haven't seen the corrections causing a problem. So for me, I tend to turn this off. Perhaps there's a set of problems you'll need to use that, so it's nice to know that it's there. Once you have this dialed in to get the effect you want, now you simply just hit OK. At this point, the correction's been applied to your image, and you're pretty much all set. For this image, the correction worked well. 
As you can see in the final image, you really don't see any hint of the banding. And there's been a lot of stretching that's gone on here, as well as accentuating the various colors that are in the image. And had we not corrected that, this would have been artifacts which would have been brought out and made much more evident, but I really don't see any evidence of that now, so this works out pretty well. So if you have a situation where you have horizontal band noise and you want to try to compensate for that, the Canon Band Reduction Tool is a very handy and easy to use tool that will help you to do that. The only question you might have is what if you had a strange situation where your banding wasn't horizontal but it was vertical? Well, my suggestion for you on that is just to rotate the image 90 degrees, make that vertical banding a horizontal banding, and then you can go ahead and use the tool to do your correction and then rotate things back. The Canon Banding Reduction Tool is not a tool that you'll need very often, but when you do need it, you'll be really glad to have it.